clothes red like the incredible hall. I spit when I talk. I fuck anything that walks. Come here. Get the fuck out of here, bitch! Stop the fat ass nuts. For the longest time, I've always considered The Incredible Hulk to be a bottom tier MCU film. It was the second movie in the shared universe, and it didn't make as big of a splash as Iron Man did that kicked things off earlier that year, and has gone largely ignored by future films. And thanks to the recasting of Edward Norton and no mention of the events and characters in this movie, many newcomers don't realize this movie even exists or that it's part of the shared universe. Hell, I usually forget about it, then it pops in my head randomly every couple months, and this is one of those times. Last time I remember actively sitting down and watching it was around the time the first Avengers came out. I was rewatching them all to get myself hyped up before the big team up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and give it a watch and see why I and many others are always ranked it so low. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. This movie's pretty awesome. Fucking, you rock, dude. So I ended up really enjoying it. Despite what my clickbait title says, it's not the best MCU movie, but I wouldn't rank it at the bottom like I always have. Here's the basic rundown of the story. After an experiment that he tested on himself, scientist Bruce Banner is now looking for a cure to his gamma radiation that affects his cells and turns into a big green rage monster called the Hulk. He's been on the run for years and is in Brazil where he thinks he finds a cure, but the US government discovers his location and he has to travel back to America to recover data and meet up with an associate that could cure him. All the while, General Ross and the US military and Bolonsky are hunting for him. Let me run through the things that I liked. <laughs> First off, the intro credits are great. It spends a few minutes giving us the basics of Hulk's origin and gets us caught up to where the movie starts. And then throughout the movie, there are a few scenes that give us some more info, either through a short expedition dump or flashbacks. There are also some shots that give us information without having to say much, like the photo of Betty that Banner keeps and the general's reaction to it, as well as the conversation with Mr. Blue to tell us exactly why he's in Brazil and what he's looking for. This is a great way to get the audience up to speed without having to dedicate the first half of the movie to the origin, the backstory, characters, and relationships. It gives us the gist of it right from the start and then drip feeds us more as the story progresses. What I really like seeing here is how Bruce Banner struggles with living with the Hulk inside of him. It shows him meditating, controlling his breathing, and I love the details like giving him a watch to check his pulse to make sure he keeps it low. The dude can't even get too worked up in fear of his heart rate getting too high and changing. It shows that the Hulk is an actual burden on him. My favorite little touches are the flashes he gets when he's normal from when he's the Hulk. The scene in the shower is especially good. It makes you really see the trouble living with the Hulk and makes you understand why he wants to find a cure. And this leads us to Edward Norton as Bruce Banner. No, me they should conform me. The fuck you say? Edward Norton is a great actor. I love this guy. And he was great in this movie as well. Something everyone praises is the size difference between him and the Hulk because he's a really slim guy, so it's cool seeing the contrast between them. It was an overall great performance from him, which isn't too surprising because I think he's great in just about everything he's in. I mean, acting-wise, everyone did a good job. The whole cast is filled with good actors, and no one felt like they were phoning it in. The only characters that didn't fully convince me were Betty and Stern. And that's because they weren't given that much time to be fully developed. And this goes for Tim Roth as well. He's a talented actor, and he's fine here too, but we aren't given an in-depth look at his character. I'll touch more on that later. But as it stands, the whole cast did a fine job and no one gave a bad performance. Very solid. And the same can be said for the story too. It's pretty straightforward and to the point. It plays out how you expect it to with very few surprises. But the characters are well acted and the action is entertaining enough to keep you watching. And it's a very fast paced movie. Every scene there's always something happening that moves the story along. And this is both a positive and negative. I'll touch on why it's a negative later but for now I'll tell you why it's good. With it being fast paced it never loses my interest since there's always something happening. There are barely any slow moments and it's never boring. I also love the subtle mentions to Captain America and S.H.I.E.L.D. Because you find out that the experiment that turned bad Banner into the Hulk was them trying to recreate the super soldier serum that turned Steve Rogers into Captain America. And S.H.I.E.L.D. is in this movie working with the General to help track down Banner. And of course, Tony Stark approaching General Ross at the end is great. All these little things help flesh out the world and show it's a shared universe and these characters exist in it. It's something easy to take for granted now, but back then the closest we got with heroes mentioning each other in their movies was this. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. Now the action is good. My favorite sequence was outside the university and with Hulk and Bolonsky facing off for the first time after he's gotten his own dose of a super soldier serum. And the final battle was good. The CGI looks decent for a 12 year old movie and watching the Abomination and Hulk knock the shit out of each other was a lot of fun. I really can't complain about it. And one of the best aspects of this movie is when Banner hulks out because here it shows the Hulk as actually being scary and a destructive force. The first time he changes in the factory is really special because it feels like a horror monster movie. You barely see the Hulk but you see the damage he causes and what he's doing to the people in his way. And that shot of the Hulk's face peering out of the darkness and glaring at Blonsky is menacing. It's great that the Hulk feels like an actual threat to Banner and people around him. And of course I gotta mention I love the inclusion of the original Hulk, Lou Ferrango from the TV series. This dude was still a monster when they filmed this. Hell he probably still is now. Let's go ahead and get into some of the issues I had with it. <laughs> 
The pacing and lacking character development are tied together because since the movie is so fast paced and the main focus is to keep the story going, this in turn causes characters to not be that fleshed out. Betty Ross, Samuel Stearns, and Blonsky are the ones that suffer the most. Oh, and Betty's boyfriend that you literally see for two minutes. I actually forgot about him. With Betty, you feel like you're supposed to like her because Banner does, so she doesn't feel like more than anything other than a love interest. There are a few cute scenes of them together. I just wish we were able to see them interact with each other more. Maybe more scenes with Betty so she feels like a more fleshed out character. Now with Blonsky, you don't learn much about him other than that he's a fighter and he wants more power. He's the opposite of Banner. Banner wants to get rid of the power inside of him, while Blonsky wants more of it. You see a few scenes of Blonsky starting to go mad and his thirst for power increase, but he's a straightforward villain with very simple motivation and we don't learn much about him. And Samuel Stearns is just there in the beginning through the chat logs as Mr. Blue, and then we finally see him in person for 10 minutes at the end before he gets turned into the leader, clearly setting him up for a sequel that never happened. I feel like this is all very sudden for the character. This movie is under 2 hours long and it could easily be 15 to 20 minutes longer. A longer runtime would definitely help flesh out these characters. The movie would have definitely benefited from having more scenes like Belonsky turned into the Abomination, showing how the serum was affecting him mentally, showing us Betty Ross more either through flashbacks from Bannister's perspective or just more scenes of them together. And that's really just my biggest complaint with the movie. The rest of my grapes are just little nitpicks, but something I didn't like was Stan Lee's cameo because he dies. And that makes me sad. I think this is the first Stan Lee cameo that actually affects the story because that's how they find where Banner is hiding. But overall the cameo itself just makes me sad. These other few nitpicks are things that I just think are funny. Like it rains a lot in this movie. I guess it's to make things look cool. But one scene will be fine, the next thing you know it's pouring. And it usually happens during dramatic moments. And this chase scene in the beginning always felt weird. Because the movie quickly goes from night to day, then back to night. First the squad lands and it's dark. Then Banner sneaks out and he's running away and now it's morning. Then it's the afternoon and the streets are full of people. Then it's night again and he reaches the factory. I'm pretty certain that this is supposed to show that he's been running all day, but the way it's edited together makes it look weird because it happens in a short amount of time. 2020 hindsight from a side mirror. Now one reason why people are looking back and appreciating this film is because of how different it feels. This was before Marvel had their formula down with the jokes, the quips, and lighthearted tone. Honestly, the Phase 1 movies feel pretty distinct from each other. There are a few funny moments here and there, but it uses the humor sparingly and instead it focuses on the story. I think this is the best interpretation of the Hulk. Mark Ruffalo is fine in a few movies, but I think they really don't know what to do with the Hulk at this point and just turned him into a joke. There seems to be a trend going on. I understand why they probably wanted to get rid of Edward Norton, because he has a tendency of involving himself in the writing, directing, and editing of a movie, and start making changes. He did it in American History X, and apparently he did it in this movie as well. Now, the most annoying thing about The Incredible Hulk isn't the movie itself, but instead how the events that happen get ignored by future films. The biggest one being that at the end, Bruce learns how to control the Hulk, but then this gets ignored in his next appearance in The Avengers and all movies afterwards. Also, Betty isn't mentioned, and instead they try doing a Hulk and Black Widow relationship, which didn't work. Nothing ever came from that stern setup, and this scene with Stark approaching General Ross about the Avengers program is ignored, because Stark later goes to think that the program is not a good idea. But since Marvel and Disney announced She-Hulk, they are now bringing back Tim Roth as the Abomination. It only took 12 years. Before that, the only mention we got was in an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode. Although they have been using General Ross more, so that's good to see. So I asked you guys what you thought of the movie, and the responses ranged from it's a hidden gem slash underrated, to being just okay or forgettable. I think it's good and very solid, and it really stands out from other MCU movies. I really like Edward Norton as Bruce Banner, and they really explored interesting aspects of the character, like how he struggles to live with this and how it's a burden on his life, and shows the Hulk to be actually scary and threatening. I saw a comment somewhere that made three points to why the movie is remembered even though they feel it's great. Number one, at the time people thought it was a sequel to Ang Lee's 2003 Hulk movie, which most people thought was boring and they didn't really want a sequel to it. Number two, the lead actor was changed and the events went ignored by future films, caused newer fans to not know this movie existed, and if they saw it, at a glance they wouldn't know that it was part of the MCU. Number three, it came out in 2008. That year saw not only Iron Man, but The Dark Knight. These were huge successful comic book movies. They were big hits with the fans, critics, and at the box office. Hell, these movies are still praised to this day. And even though The Incredible Hulk was good, and some would even say great, it wasn't at the same level these two were. So it got overshadowed and forgotten about. I think it's a very interesting theory. But guys, in the end, I was definitely wrong about The Incredible Hulk. It is a very solid movie and I really enjoyed it. And looking online, there is actually a ton of cut scenes. Even on the DVD and Blu-ray copies, they have dozens of deleted scenes that just never made it to the movie. Probably the most important one was the alternate opening where he tries to take his own life but it doesn't work. This scene was actually referenced in The Avengers. It's a great scene, I wish it would have made it into the movie. But go ahead, leave a comment, let me know what you think about it. Do you think it's just okay or meh or forgettable? Or do you consider it underrated and a hidden gem? Alright, get out of here. I'm hungry. Now I'm going to go to the